First Samuel chapter, uh, Second Samuel chapter five. Then came all the tribes of Israel, with twelve of them, to David unto Hebron, that's south, a little bit south of Jerusalem, and spake, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But David set off by the tribe of Judah. Also in time past, when Saul was king over us, thou was he that led us out and brought us in Israel. David won the battles. David's one that got the victories. And the Lord said unto thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be captain over Israel. Military leader and king. So all the elders of Israel came the king to the king in Hebron, and that's where he, that's where he's been the king since Ishbanish was taken over. Now Ishbanish is gone, and King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. In chapter two, verse four. Second Samuel two four. The men of Judah came, that's down south, not Israel, and they anointed David king over the house of Judah, not Israel, just Judah. And they told David, saying that they meant what the men of Jabez Gilead has done. So let's look at First Samuel sixteen. First Samuel sixteen. About David. First Samuel 16 and verse 13. Then Samuel took a horn of oil and anointed him, David, in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forth. So David's first anointed here. With his brothers and his father Jesse present. David is anointed again. In chapter 2 verse 4. By the people of Judah. The tribes of Judah. David's anointed again. By all Israel. So he has had three anointings. Now there's twice they made Saul king. One Samuel and the people. But the second time for Saul is not mentioned. There was oil. But each and every time for David, he's been anointed, and it would be probably the, the olive oil, like a high priest. And David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. That'd be 70 when, when Solomon takes over. And again, the 30 years and 40, there may have been some extra months, maybe 40 years and two months, I mean. In Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem, he reigned 33 years over all Israel and Judah. So now where we are, where everybody's anointed David as king over Judah and Israel, now the 33 years will begin. He's already reigned uh, seven years. In six months in Hebrew. It's been three and a half years since he's been anointed by Judah in chapter 2 verse 4. Now the time of Jesus Christ 33 years old and a half. That's the time that Jesus was put on the cross and suffered and died. And that's the length of David's reign in Jerusalem. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem leaving Hebrew. And unto the Jebusites, that's who's living there now. Those are the, the Canaanites of the land of Jebusites. And the inhabitants of the land of Israel. Which spake unto David, saying, Now these are the Jebusites, these are the enemies of God. Except thou take away the blind and the lame, thou shalt not come in hither. Thinking David cannot come in hither. You can't come in this this city we're too big we're too great we're too strong for you and in 
trying to read this note here. That in Yogurt Shiloh uncovered the city of David 1978 to 1985 and, and all the discoveries of after David, David's life and after his life. So it's been proven. And the greatest discoveries they've yet found in the city of David. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion. That's the first time that's mentioned. Zion, Z-I-O-N, is Jerusalem, Jebusite area. Later on, we will get the title deed of Jerusalem to David, according to the Bible. And David sat on that day, said on that day, excuse me, whosoever get, getteth, that's the first time that shows up, getteth, up to the gutter, that's the only time that shows up, gutter, and along the walls, I would assume somewhere there was a gutter kind of system to wash away the rain, like we do today. And smite us the Jebusites, and the lame and the blind, like they were just making fun of him. Oh yeah? Can't get rid of the lame? Can't get rid of the blind? I'll show you what my men can do. That are hated of David's soul. Oh, 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 look at that. David hated. David hated the enemies of God. He shall be chief and captain. Well, later on we'll learn that's Joab. Wherefore they said, the blind and the lame shall not come into the house. And you can't do it, David. Oh, he will. So David dwelt in the fort, first time that word shows up, and called it the city of David, the Jebusites. He took over their land, and he took over their forts and their buildings. And he says, I removed the name Jebusite I call it the city of David. So when they talk about the city of David, we're in the Jebusite land, which is really in the land of Benjamin. And David built round about from Milo and inward. So there's an area in there called Milo, and he's building walls and buildings. And, and David went on and grew great, and the Lord God of hosts was with him. Hiram, you're going to see this, this gentleman come up. I believe God was approved of Hiram. King of Tyre, that's along the sea coast of northwest, along the Mediterranean Sea. A city that will be uh, cursed by God. A city that will be destroyed on the coast. They went out into the city, I mean out to an island and built the city. And destroyed by Alexander the Great there. And there's prophecies about that of Tyre. Sent messengers to David. And cedar trees. And carpenters. That's the first time that word shows up. Plural carpenters. So Hiram is sending wood. And he's sending men to work with that wood. So David can build. And masons. And believe it or not. With this and Solomon, when you read about Masons, from the mouth of a Mason, who rebuked me because I had books against Masonry, this is when the Masons started, according to him. And what, as a Mason, had the ring and everything, went to the lodges, he told me that under David, but more so under Solomon, is where the Masons have begun their religion. And they claim to be of Christ and all that, but this is 1,048 years before Christ. And they say, you know, they're built with the temple. That's why with all these movies and stories, that's why Solomon's temple is mentioned, the gold of Solomon and all. That's why we got to go find the Ark of the Covenant, because that's all supposedly done by the Masons. And they built David a house. So now David has a mainframe house. And David perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel, and that he had exalted his kingdom for his people, Israel, Satan. And that's what God's going to do to Jesus. He's going to exalt Jesus. He's going to give him a home. He's going to give him David's throne. He's going to give the people of Israel in the millennium under the authority of Jesus Christ. And David took him more concubines. Why? Now, 
in the Bible, yes, there are men that took multiple wives and concubines. Concubines is another name for a wife. It's recorded by the Holy Scriptures. It's recorded by the Holy Spirit. But you cannot find anywhere in 66 books that God said, go ahead and do it. David, I enjoy that. Solomon, I enjoy that. Kings of Israel, kings of Judah, I never did God say I enjoyed it. He allowed it. Under the New Testament, it says that a man is to have one wife. Now, God, when he made an elk meat for Adam, he gave him one wife. God was angry when Abraham went unto Hagar instead of Sarah. Took more wives out of Jerusalem. So he had wives taken from Hebron. Now he's got wives taken out of Jerusalem. After he was come from Hebron, and there were yet sons and daughters born to David. These be the names of those that were born unto him in Jerusalem. Shalama, Shalama, Sebab, Nathan, and Solomon. Well, let's go to Luke 3, 31. And we're going to look at the genealogy of Mary first and Joseph and see it's the same, but yet it's different. It's of the line of David, Judah. But Mary's line does not have the kingly line. The adopted father, Joseph, has that kingly line. And I said verse 31, chapter 3, verse 31. Which was the son of Melia, which is the son of Menan, which is the son of Mananiah, which is the son of Nathan, there he is, where we read, which is the son of David, which is the son of Jesse. Okay, there we go. Mary is of this Nathan that was born in Jerusalem. Now, I don't know if this boy was named after Nathan the prophet that would go to David later saying, thou art the man. And if that's the case, look at the respect that David had to Nathan that he named one of his boys. Now Matthew 1 6. The adopted father, Joseph, and how David inquired the throne of David. But God cursed that line, the Jeconiah, which would bring us to the virgin birth. But by the adoption of Joseph, Matthew 1. 6. And Jesse begat David. Okay, we read that Mary's line. The king. Look at that. The king. Jesus Christ is the king of kings. So Jesus would be kinger over David. And David, the king, begat. No, David the king. Begat Solomon. And Solomon begat Roboam. So there it is. So when we come back over to 2 Samuel 5, verse 14, we have Joseph's and Mary's line at the split. And these be the names of those that were born unto him in Jerusalem. Shemahala, Shobad, Nathan, Mary, Solomon, Joseph. Abihar, and Ejelishima, and Nepheg, and Jephthah, Elishima and Elida and Lifeda. But when the Phil see that's the royal line. That's the royal line of David. These names, if a child were to if, if order the children would be born are dead. By their birth they would be a throne. Like in, in America, if the president of the United States died for whatever reason. Well, the vice president would take over. He would be in line. And the vice president would be killed, died, whatever, in, in his office. And I would believe it would be the speaker house and then all the way down the, the, the round. Well, this is the line of David. This is, the, you know, this is the royal seed of David. We have a Hebron seed and we have a, Jer a Jerusalem seed. Absalom is that of Hebron, 
Solomon is that of Jerusalem. But when the Philistines heard that there were that they had anointed David king over Israel. All the Philistines came up to seek David. It sounds good. And David heard of it, and he went down to the hold. <laughs> Military battle. We're going down to the hold. Bring your swords. And the Philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. Seems to be a common battlefield. And David inquired the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Will thou deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thy hand. I'll give you victory, David. David came to Baal Perism. And David smote them there and said, The Lord has broken forth upon my enemies before me, as the breach of waters. Therefore he called the name of the place Baal Perism. The, play, the plain of the breaches. He just made holes and filled in those holes and killed. That's what a breach is. And there they left, the, and there they left their images. Oh, images. And David and his men burned them. Jacob buried them. David says, I'm not even going to bury them. I'm going to burn them. Put them in a the pile. I know there's a book burning in the book of Acts, but here's the first image burning. And it's done by David of the Philistines. And they maybe had images of Asterisk and Dagon and what other gods. Remember, they're the ones that came up with the images of their Imrods and all that. So they're famous for their images. We even gave the God of the Israelites images. And the Philistines came up with Again, here they come again. Spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. Let's try it again. And when David inquired the Lord, he said, God said, Thou shalt not go up. Nope. First time, go get the victory. This time, nope. Fetch a compass. Go around. Behind them. And come upon them over against the millberry tree. Around and around the millberry tree, around and around the mill. Used to be a song when we sang when we were children. You didn't know that came out of the Bible, did you? And let it be, when thou hearest the sound of the going in the tops of the mulberry tree. What is that? I have no idea. Something in those mulberry trees over the top of them makes the sound. That then. Then thou shalt be stirred, the only place that word shows up, thyself. For then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. All right, Dan, we're going to put you a little test here. Only when you hear those sound, you go. It's like he did to um, Balaam. Balaam, I want you to go only if they say you come with us. And Balaam didn't obey. And there are things in our life that God says, only if. And he wants to see what we'll do. And David did so as the Lord had commanded him. So he obeys God. Saul didn't obey God. David still. And smote the Philistines from Geba. Until thou comest to Gezer. Or Gezer. Or something like that. And there you go. David is not in the office of the king of all the entire nation. Already he's bound the Philistines. And he's already obeying God. David's wonderful. 